I was looking at your record. You're ten and two over your last twelve. One was an injury. The other one was that split decision loss to Ed Ruth that many people thought you should have won. That said, the rankings just came out. You're sixth. Do you feel like you're being overlooked in the division despite this incredible record you have right now? Uh, yes, I, I didn't. Like I said, I feel like I haven't lost. Uh, to me personally, I haven't lost to Ed Ruth. I haven't lost since I came to Bellator. But the ranking kind of confused. Me, I, I'm, I'm confused myself by the, by the rankings because at first Bellator put up a ranking, say one to five, and I was in a picture. So I didn't understand how I end up in six. So, you know, I just got to fight. I get a chance, a big opportunity to fight number number three guys, which I consider number one. And once I beat them, then there's no more question. Now, you just mentioned, you know, you both are highly ranked. Are you looking at this as the number one contender match? Like, if you win, is the title the next shot? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, like I said in the get-go, if Bellator doesn't feel that way or anyone of the world to wait that feels feels like they're not the champ and they disagree, then we'll go fight for that position. I got two last questions. Uh, Neiman did an interview earlier this week, and he was saying that he wanted Michael Page to end up with you. It seemed like that was the fight he wanted. Do you think he's looking past you? Well, no, because Michael Pay would be an easier fight than me because I could grapple. What are you talking about? A smart guy. <laughs> uh, last one, speaking about that, how do you feel like your grappling matches up with, you know, with Gracie? The same way how his striking matched up with mine. Right, good luck to you, sir. Yes, thank you. Tony? Hi, right, Jason. Good, good afternoon. Um, obviously, your, your last... Last fight against Benson Henderson. How 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 did it feel to beat beat such a, a big name as, as Benson Henderson has been in in the sport of mixed martial arts? It, it feels good, but if I would, it would have felt a, a lot better if I would have beat him at an earlier time. And you know, Ben Henderson, he came out and you know he came and gave it his all, even though he took that fight on short notice. But I felt like I could have finished him. I made a lot of mistakes that I needed to see and go back to the drawing board and work. And 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 obviously you're coming off of the back of, of three back-to-back wins. Um, you know, just from a confidence perspective, how, does that put you in, in a different headspace going into this fight now? It's four back-to-back. Don't forget the Ed Roof. It's four Sorry. back-to-back. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to me, I don't, I don't feel no worry. I don't I, because I'm so pre- prepared. You know, I have a very good preparation for this camp, better than any other camp that I had so far in Bellator. So, all my words are into my camp, and you know, go out and smash, Jim. Jim Bar, Small Miami Herald. Thank you. Talk a little bit more about that camp and what made that camp so much better or you working better in the camp is what was it all about because last year during the quarantine it was very hard to get work and consistent work it was just here and there but during 21st i get you know everything is kind of open up and lifting it's it kind of i got more time to go to the hills the beach meet all my coaches meet up in in a a more group and get better session where does the victory, where does that get you in the next step? I'm the guy to keep that, keep my eye on. I mean, I'm the guy that better to have to keep the eye on in this division. I'm going to be the next welterweight champion this year. And lastly, after you get your victory, will you be celebrating by going to WrestleMania in Tampa? That Well, well if they're allowing crowd and I get my hands on some tickets and why not? I would love to take the family there and go celebrate. Win, lose, or draw. Still, I would love to go for the first time experience WrestleMania. James? It's James here from Strictly MMA. Just a couple questions for you, Jason. Um, you just beat a big name in Benson Henderson. I know you said you would have liked it to be you know, earlier, but it's still a big name, a former UFC lightweight champ. Now taking on Neiman Gracie, Gracie being so symbolic in the sport of mixed martial arts. I mean, what does it mean to you to be fighting a Gracie member? It, this right here, fighting Gracie would be good because it's only loss in Bellator is, is to form a champ. And I want to be the guy to be also put a Gracie on under my name the same way 
um, Rory McDonald be him and, you know, say he's the guy to beat. I want to be the guy to finish him. First guy to finish Grayson. Absolutely. And then this one, I might be late to the party with this one, but can you just tell me where the, the nickname came from, the ass kicking machine? I mean, who gave it to you? Was it you? Was it someone else? I, I got it from, I'm, I did it myself in my f- was my first amateur fight or it was my third amateur fight. I introduced the ass kicking machine and the whole crowd stopped laughing and just was just get they were just dying. And then once I finished the fight, it was like, yes, this guy's a machine. He's an ass kicking machine for real. But it kind of came along watching a lot of WWE. Santiago. Hi Jason. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. Thank you. And we hoped. Henry Hoft was a guest on the famous Weighing In podcast hosted by Josh Thompson and Big John McCarthy. He said on that podcast that you are the sunshine of Sanford MMA with your good vibes and your beautiful music in the morning. Can you feel that in the gym as well, that people really appreciate your contribution to the team? Well, I'm, I'm always told, but, you know, I just said if I could get everybody on the same wavelength, then you know, it will be good as that I'm on. So, you know, one person alone can't bring that, that energy. You need everybody to be on the same page. So it's better that way and easier. Last one for me, Jason. How special is it to train under Dutch world-class trainer Henry Hoft? And what did he do to make you a better fighter? It was the missing piece to my puzzle. I knew how to do a little Muay Thai. I knew how to box. I knew how to do wrestling. But the kickboxing, everything put together, once I met Henry, he showed me how to stay there, stand your ground, and fight like a man. And I adapt that into my style for the movement and everything. So it kind of completes me. Me? Uh, so last night, an interview came out on MMA Junkie uh, with, with your opponent, Gracie. Uh, when talking about your skills, uh, he said he thinks you are good at striking, but not that good, not that dangerous. What do you make of his analysis of your skills? Well, same way I feel. I feel like he's really good at um, jiu-jitsu, but I don't feel like not that dangerous because I got my hands. We ain't, we're not doing jiu-jitsu. We got these right here. You have to think about these. Yes, sir. And can we hear uh, you also said that Showtime is a boxing network. People want to see a fight especially with a guy that throws hands like me, what can the people expect this weekend? They have to expect some firework, and I'm going to knock Gracie out. You don't think my hands are dangerous? Watch. You don't got no stand-up. Dylan? Hey there, Jason. How's it going? Doing good. Yeah, I appreciate you making some time. I think a lot has been made in this, you know, scrum about your time in, you know, Florida and Sanford MMA. But, you know, born in Kingston, Jamaica, I'm kind of curious your thoughts on just, you know, the domestic growth of mixed martial arts there. Because it seems like MMA, Jamaica, Sports Federation is making big strides in regulating and promoting the sport. So can you speak about the grassroots MMA scene in Jamaica? Yes, um... Definitely need a, a, a bit more developing. You know, they need re- good wrestling program and good kickboxing program, stuff like that. Boxing, world-class coaches. That's all I feel like the, the um, Jamaican Federation is missing. You got all the ethic and all the talents just waiting. Yeah, fair point. Thanks for the time, man. Thank you. Chris? Hey, ass kicking machine. It's Chris from tarpsoftsports.com. And I just, good, good talking to you, man. It's great to see you. Now, I know you came into the promotion, I believe, in 2018 off the top of my head. What is the difference between the Jason Jackson now as opposed to the Jason Jackson then? And then I just have one more for you after that. Um, then, when, in 2018, I was trying to get back on my feet because I broke my leg in 2018, was it? And came back and fought it in the 2018 or 2017, one year I broke my leg and had to get my confidence, go out there and fight. And I didn't get signed, re signed. I came back, went to work again, local scene, and get re signed to Bellator. And I'm here. And I just realized, like, yes, it's my time. You know, it's my time. I just have to go. Don't second guess it, go because everything's already written in the script incredible and last question for you you brought up wrestlemania if the ass kicking machine could headline wrestlemania against one wrestler past or present who would it be 
Undertaker. <laughs> Matthew? How's it going, Jason? This is Matthew Putterman from IMMA News. How you doing, Matthew? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, so my first question is to you. You know, where do you see yourself here in the next five years of your career? Next five years? Yeah. Um, wow. Next five years, um, whooping ass, cashing check, and taking names. Love it. One more question for you, too, brother. If So if you win this fight, of course, you are ranked six in the welterweight division currently fighting the number three guy. You know, I think a great fight between you and Michael Venom Page would be great. Your striking has grown exponentially since working with Henry Hooft, and Michael Venom Page is one of the best strikers in the division, too. How would you stylistically match up with him, and uh, how would you like that fight to be next? Yeah, that fight will be awesome because I, Michael Venom Page, he also have, he have an athletic fiber explosive muscle the same way I do. It's like two mongoose going against two mo another mongoose. But one mongoose know how to grapple. We'll take a couple more here. Simon? Simon Romero behind the grind. Mr. Jason Jackson, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing awesome. Awesome, awesome. So I like to hear. So you're representing Jamaica. How does it feel representing your own country on the world stage? Well, no matter what I do, I'm going to rep represent my country because, you know, Jamaican people are prideful and proud set of people. So. And my second question for you would be, uh, what steps do you need to take in order to bring home the W on Friday night? Keep the fight standing and put my hands on this guy. All right, last one here. Jonah? Hey, Jason. Jonah Ross here from Behind the Grind. Uh, I'm wondering how uh, the guys at Samford, the guys and ladies at Samford MMA are able to help you um, kind of negate the grappling of, of Neiman Gracie. Well, we grapple every all of his favorite positions. And, you know, we have grapplers that, that definitely are more higher level when it comes to wrestling and jiu-jitsu. So um, I, I said when when I make my professional debut as far as fighting in in the local scene, Nemo and Gracie probably was just a blue belt, purple belt. So I have experience on my side. I, I fought plenty of black belts. <laughs>